and welcome to Always Open. If you're looking for those people in the trailer, well, leave now because they're not here. Uh, I'm your host, Michael Jones, and this is the Off Topic Extra Life Stretch Goal Takeover. Thanks for joining us. I'm joined by guests Jeff Ramsey. Hello. Ryan Haywood. Hi. And Jeremy Dooley. How do you do? How do you do, Jeremy? I do well. Oh, do. that's great. I do. It's great. You got a nice little triangle there next to you. Yeah. You know? It just looks like a great bludgeon. Like a device. relic. Yeah. yeah. It's like a plum bob. Yeah. Put it over your head and you can speak similar. It is similar-ish. shaped like a plum bob. Or you could drop yeah. it down a wall. Or like this way. Extreme yeah. butt plug. Drop it on your head right Ryan, now and see if you bleed. No, let's Wait not till do that. Oh, you're in The Sims. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. You exactly. said that. So yeah, much. I didn't get plum bob. It didn't make sense <laughs> to me. You know, uh, what? I, far be it from me to, oh, to please. give you advice oh, on your do show takeover. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, in the future, if and when we, uh, we or you do these, I would uh, recommend that you uh, try to get broadcast to at least superimpose your faces over their faces in the air. It was a bit uh, of yeah. a clickbait sort of situation, wasn't yeah. it? There yeah. was, people those, probably got really excited when they saw Barbara and Mariel, mm-hmm. and then they vomited yeah. when it opened up on me. Yeah. Just but other than that, it was perfect, it's, is what you're saying. It was I absolutely know. perfect. Your Immaculate. intro was phenomenal. I just think like the audience would like to get the vomit out during the intro. Oh, mm-hmm. that's true. So they can maybe be cleaned up by the time the show yeah. starts. It's been a real long time since I've uh, done the show. It's, they got rid of the thing. Uh, where Gavin used to walk by, they got oh, rid yeah, of the. That's a TV. There was a trellis. What are you describing? Well, there was a window, Michael. A window yeah, under the television. street. Right. They'd come uh, to the door. You'd be amazed how expensive the upkeep on a trellis is. Oh yeah. Just we couldn't keep it. Plus in the that door, they had to keep oiling it. Yep. Every yeah. week they'd have to get somebody new to walk through it. You know, Barbara could have saved money if she walked through it and then ran into her seat, but she didn't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Had an old man hobble through it. Had an episode. old man hobble through. He'd be stuck in that door for thirty or forty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Never make the engine. You know, we got this, three or four very different variations on what a nice shirt is. Too. I mean, well, I said wear whatever you want. Just yeah, clean no, it up did. a little you bit. Said, did yeah. you, you said a nice shirt. That's what you told me. I nice think shirt. everyone looks lovely. I I'm have, not saying that anyone looks bad. I'm just saying it's it's variation. See, Jeff, I actually went to the dry cleaner and had my shirt pressed. J- Jeff, Jeff, I did looks, not. No, yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> wrinkles. You dug that out of the closet. I left it in the car for most of the day in hopes that the warmth would make the wrinkles come Not out. That I put some suede vans <laughs> you can on. See. Ooh. Yeah, you know. yeah, see, the thing about Jeff is Jeff looks the most normal to me, but that's because he's always classed it up. Yeah. 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 He's up here. We're down here. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. That's what sure. I like about Always Open. Mm-hmm. Not only is it always open, it's always uplifting. Well, wait until like we you, get to the... You and oh, we there, yeah, no, there's, until we get to the questions. There's things in there. Yeah. We've, seen some, we've seen some questions. We've got some questions. We, we got a little ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Awful lot of succulents around. Yeah. I feel like they're plotting something. There's... They're, they... Um, this is fine now because they, they vamp now more. The oh, beginning. they do. Mm-hmm. So this is okay. We're allowed we're to doing do Doing vamp, and then we'll do speed dating. That's where we like fire off. They got a timer and everything. Now, this isn't live. No. 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 Oh, so if I wanted to say something naughty, yeah, we could cut it out. Like doo-doo. Like fudge. Oh, yeah. Wow. As long as you let them know it's Sir. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. There are diabetics out there. Make a mental note there. and be like, cut that. Get that out of here. Mm. Can't have it. But that's all that, That's all up to us. You wore buttons. You had buttons. I have buttons. Just three Lindsay of them. Lindsay today was like, do you wear buttons on like a normal every day like you're hanging around the house? I'm like, nope. I, and then I said, I feel like you know the answer to that because you've asked him. Mm. Has that come up before, the buttons? I'm just saying it's like, hey, that looks, I'm asking you because that looks weird. So I feel right. like you answered your own question. <laughs> because it's like, clearly something you never you wear. don't wear. No. Yeah. I fought the urge to strike you as soon as I saw you today and I went, no, wait. That's not a nerd. dressed up. That's true. <laughs> That's, well, it's just because it's something, you were doing something different and I hated it. Right. Let but me. There was a reason. Like the internet, we fear change. Oh, mm, terribly. Let me ask you a question. Who do you think in Achievement Hunter? I'll include myself as a legacy member. Who do you think in Achievement Hunter owns the most buttons? Oh, oh uh, my. Probably Trevor. Trevor. Trevor's got a lot of buttons. Huh? I imagine. Yeah. yeah. He's, oh, he's yeah. got a lot of clothes in yeah. general. He's, yeah. a, he's one Half of those styly boys. Every day. You can yeah. tell by the hair how many buttons a person probably owns. He also wears nice shoes for no reason. So I'm suspicious. Now you, yeah. you've got a fair number of buttons. I don't think I do. I, I feel like he does, but also like think of how many more years he's been on the earth compared to Trevor. Yeah. I've had a little bit of time to accumulate. That's yeah. see, I've got a closet of legacy buttons. Hold on. I got a lot buttons. of buttons for things I'm not. College buttons. Good yeah. yeah. I do I think I still have an Eagle News t shirt or a <laughs> collared shirt from uh, the broadcast department at Georgia Southern University. Oh. Why I've carried that through my life to this point, I do not know. I hope you'll wear it yeah. soon on camera. Well, I'll do it just for you. I appreciate that. Well, he won't be there, but 
I'll watch it. I'll watch. tell him about it. I'll tell him about it. Funny thing about uh, not being in day-to-day Achievement Hunter content anymore, I watch way more of it than I used to. Oh. Do you really? Yeah. Well, I gotta, gotta well what were your abreast. general thoughts? Mm. I love it. I think you guys are firing on all cylinders. Wow, everyone. Wow. You know what I'm... I'm very always open answer of you. All three cylinders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys are like a Geo Metro, but you're a well-oiled Geo Metro. Those three-cylinder engines don't... Don't power a lot of cars. You're not going fast, but you're going. <laughs> you're you're you can't we were a car. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're a big scooter. Three cylinders. <laughs> we're, like, we're like big scooters down. You know what I quite Austin. enjoy? Hmm. I don't want to get into a like promoting other content through this content. Please do. But just as a, as a genuine, honest fan, I find you specifically oh. on this just internet to be delightful. Oh, oh wow. I really can do the old man shtick, yeah. You do it it's very, it's very, it comes across as... Mm-hmm. Uh, extremely authentic, like out of touch, uh, yes. aged out of the content. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dad so vibes, there. Yeah. You yeah. were, you had your foot in the door when you started with that. Pretty much, yeah. No, I mean, I, I started with were. Child. It was yeah. just. How old were you when you started working at Rooster Teeth? Uh, like the day I hired, you. like 31. Wow. Yeah. So you're like, you were 31 going on 45 then. Easily, yeah. So you're you're like a septuagenarian by now. You made an interesting choice. I, I did. Mean, I, just, I did. I did. You know what? What was septuagenarian? Was that? I'm proud the word of it. That? Uh, that's somebody who's in we their 70s. Have, I knew that. Okay. I was seeing if he knew it, and he did. He did not. I tried. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> This is maybe the lowest decibel conversation that this group has ever had. I thought you'd appreciate it. it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, that's that's what these these are, these takeovers. I almost feel like we're having a competition to see who can speak the quietest. Sure. It's not necessarily the quietest, it's like the calmest. Mm. You know, it's, you you gotta soothe. Do they still do the box of issues? Yeah, who's, who's No, because there are no issues. I have an issue. Also, I'll be honest, I don't don't see it, so I I hope not. I don't, I think it's right there. Oh, Oh, my God, I found it. (laughs) I have yeah, a, we still do it. Yeah, I want right. to. I want to get to it. I have an issue with you, but I don't. I don't want to cover it yet. That's are we if we're not ready beef? for it. Where's that on wanna, the menu? That's not even here. That the dessert section. What's going on? That's an appetizer that I didn't know we had. Oh my God! Remind right. me after we have our always open meal, <laughs> and it's time for our digestif. Uh-huh. Uh, I have a digestif of issue with you. Oh my! I'd like to raise. Wow! Is it? Is we're it? We're gonna an sit on that. You can look a whole episode. I hope the result is uplifting. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. Well, I guess we should just uh, get into speed dating. Let's do it. Okay, so no, we'll start how does with, this work exactly? We'll start with Jeff. So, uh, That's so I know what you want to answer as fast as possible and uh, try and get through them all. See if I, I can think get through there's them all. about five or six questions for each. It would take too long to count exactly. Exactly. Yeah, just say five or six. It should be eating time. I guess that I think means I'm, it's done. That your, means your my time is, is up. up. <laughs> uh, all right, Jeff, let's start the clock. In a certain light, wouldn't nuclear war be exciting? Yes. Do you like going to weddings? No. Bigger deal, sharing your bed or your history in bed? Ooh, history in bed. Is the idea of spending the day at a nude beach appealing to you? Yes. If you had the opportunity to drink from the fountain of youth and revert to a younger age, would you? Obviously, that's a dumb question. Oof. Would you ever wait beside the red carpet at an opening night or award ceremony no. just to catch a glimpse of your favorite celebrity? No. Didn't even need to hear the end of the question. Yeah, you knew, knew right away. Yeah. yeah, I gotta Not, read them faster as well. Not waiting all night anywhere. So um, that, that was a lot of words in that one. The last one really, really slammed me. And then as I recall, you really don't you can mildly discuss them, but it's kind okay. of like they know more about Nuclear death were now. exciting. In a in the right set. In the yeah, right also setting, yeah. you didn't say it'd be good. Something can mm-hmm. be awful but still exciting. That's true. It's awfully exciting. Awfully exciting. If it holds yeah. your attention, it's exciting. Uh oh. Yeah. Exciting. Uh oh. What would you do at a nude beach? Look at boobies. But you're gonna be nude. You're fine just hanging it out? Oh. I don't think yeah, it said spying creepily on a nude beach from a distance. <laughs> with I'm, the bushes. Yeah. I'm not, I don't feel a big need to be naked, but I wouldn't say I'm, especially now that I lost a little bit of weight, I'm not embarrassed to be naked. Let me ask you this. Is it rude to be clothed at a nude yes, beach? Yes, I think so. Like, yeah. it's an option, though. I think at a clothing Yeah, but that's a little gauche, right? Like, it yeah. is. Like, then you seem like a creeper. Sometimes we yeah. go to, uh, we go to Australia and we go to Sydney. There's that uh, very famous beach mm-hmm. uh, whose name escapes me right now. Not Mannheim Beach, but the other one. Uh, Bonsai Beach. Oh, yeah. Uh, a Bondi Beach. Sorry, Bondi Beach. Bonsai is a tree. It is. Bon, uh, Bondi Beach, and you will see uh, very many clothed people, but also very many naked people. Yeah, it's not a nude 
speech per se, but there's several people around that are just people just yeah. go embracing wild. the nude. See, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I think sure. if, you, if it's classified as nude beach, have some respect and, and, and I think, hey, dong. I think for guys, it's it's a combination of belly and dong, right? I don't have a belly, and I don't have a. Gr I, I'm not proud of my penis, but I'm not embarrassed by it. Mm. So In it's like it's just a penis. Like, there's like a ratio. Like, it's just right, kind of there. There's a man with a penis. Mm. What's is, what, what's the balance there though? Okay, if you've got like a larger gut, do you have to have a larger yes, penis to? Yes, you okay. do. You do. But usually, right. and unfortunately, the opposite is true. Yeah, true. It's, it will get swallowed up in the, yeah. in the girth. But it's that's a great recipe for a comedy. It is. Yeah. You always cut this. Just so you don't even see the. It's never like a whole human. If it's like funny, it's just like a fat gut and a tiny wiener. Yep. And it's like that's funny, and then funny stuff and then right move there. Along to the next funny, scene. funny stuff. Yeah. All right, well, that was good, Jeff. Thank you. I think you did great. I Ryan, did my best. Ryan, are you prepared? I will read fast. Think. Okay, I'm ready. Oh man, this is uh, this is crazy that this is for you. Okay. Because there's just a word there that screams Ryan. All right, start the clock and go. Do you make impulse purchases a lot, like gadgets you don't need or clothes that are too expensive? No. How important is it for you to see movies on opening night? No. Do no. you have a nice ass? I think so. Is it easy for you to throw away things that you don't really use anymore? Absolutely. Would you develop a new hobby slash cultivate a new interest just to have something in common with your partner? <laughs> no. Oof. Do you consider yourself an activist? No. We're done. Easy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nailed it. Goes, done. There you go. <laughs> I like when it said, when he answered no, in like, made no sense. Right, yeah, the second question How I... How important I, is it for you to see a movie on opening night? No. No, no it's I mean, not. No, I Grammatically, it, yeah. no, I it won't. got to the point. I, How dare you would have also uh, been accepted. I mean, for anyone, like, I, I feel like Ryan and Achievement Hunter, that's the most, like, that's the most true about... I'll get there. Opening night. Maybe. Or I'll wait till a plane. What? I don't want to derail the episode, but hmm. so, I got to do... Something is driving me crazy. Can yeah. I fix it real fast? I just... Uh, ugh. Because the camera's on you a lot, and... This picture is crooked, and it's just driving oh, me yes. insane. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. I don't, I don't you can't even like fix it. it. Oh, now it's man. worse. Uh, can we get some tape? Oh, oh. Some I, think I thought he was oh, going to okay. fix it. Much better. Me, it's though. better. It's a little no, off. No, no, you're, you're perfect. I thought that had like a, like a stray eyebrow or something. Or, that, or yesterday when I said, is that hair that coming from you? Or, yeah, yeah you. I had a random long hair. I, I just wouldn't have been able to concentrate the rest of the episode. And you didn't. And now I'm good. Now I'm good. Okay. He's back. Anything else? Do you want to attack Jeremy yet, or you're going to wait? Uh, I'll wait. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All right, this is a stupid question, the first one. Awesome. Uh, Jeremy, are you prepared? Yes. Okay, and go. Do you believe in dinosaurs? Yes. Would it be a good idea to pass a law requiring people to take a course and pass a test before being allowed to have a child? Uh, no. Do you find that you're more open-minded after you've visited somewhere new? Yes. Would you do something outrageous, stupid, or adventurous simply because it would make a good story to tell yes. later? Yes. How well do you handle criticism? Pretty well, I think. If a brand shares your political views, does it influence how you feel about it? Hmm. I, yeah. Yeah. So, you do believe in dinosaurs. Though. I do believe in dinosaurs. <laughs> now, I do believe in dinosaurs. My query is, is the question uh, asking if you believe they existed or do you believe they exist now? I mean, there are animals that exist now that were around during the dinosaurs. It depends on what That's you classify as a dinosaur, thing. I guess. Ah, it's a real one-two punch. He believe, yeah. believes in both dinosaurs and evolution. I mean, do you, do you classify, like, a crocodilian as a dinosaur? No. Okay. Then I don't. Then no, I do not believe dinosaurs are still around. I mean, again, I don't know that this is the question. <laughs> it's kind of vague, and I think yeah. intentionally so. Yeah. Hmm. There's not, like, a Land Before Time-esque cave somewhere with... Yeah. When so, I got to the outrageous story, I almost couldn't finish it. Oh, when it was like... You'd you... set yourself on fire in the middle of that question for an outrageous story. Yeah, I mean, I, I say that to Kat all the time. She's like, "That's that would be horrendous. Why would you do this? Because that's like, funny. It's super dangerous. And then I'm like, because that story afterward would be great. <laughs> it would be a really great story. You why gotta you, think about the next Why'd step? you bash your head into a table? It was funny. Footage. It was on camera. It was funny. Yeah. You did get a phone call, though, asking you not to do that again. Uh, it was a text message. Oh, sorry. From my Kat? mother. Oh, from your mother? <laughs> no, Cat was like, whatever. <laughs> right, Cat was like, ugh. You do what you gotta do. Yeah. As for the the last two were both like, yeah, it depends. You know? What was the last one? It was like if last a, one was if a, if a brand uh, aligns with your political views, does that make you more likely? And then I would say in reverse, if it doesn't, would that more make make you more likely to not? It's it's a real. It. It, it depends. A how like 
vicious they are with it. Like, like, you know, are they crazy with it and stuff like that? I know a lot of people attribute that to why I stopped drinking Bang. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah. Uh, mm. But, but I know reason, that's a two-parter. That's a two-parter. I mean, like, that is like, you know, it doesn't align with my political views. I get it. But also, the guy's also a little... Right. Yeah. He's he's loopy. Right. So saying was, some crazy stuff. And crazy things like, about what bang can do, bonkers. like and what it can heal. So and then at the same time, I didn't want to say no, I won't. Like that doesn't help my view. But like if you hear something that you like from a product, you subconsciously just are like, okay, I like this more now. It's you know. So I'm like, I'm sure I do, <clears> without <throat> even thinking about it. Sometimes, you know. I'll be honest. You handled that criticism excellent. That Me? one was also I was a little shaky on. It depends on the criticism. It depends on what it's said. If it's actually a constructive <clears throat> thing, I love that. I love going, okay, like Trump, for example. People are like, oh, you should try doing this, you should try doing that, blah, blah, blah. And we do all of it. I always read the things and really try, like, they've changed, the audience has changed the show quite a bit just based on their feedback, stuff like that. But every now and again, you get something that's just like, all right, well, I'm going to push back get on taller. That. I mean, you know, either something we can't do or something that's like... I saw those platform shoes, and you looked great in them. It was awesome. Yeah, he looked great from the ankles up. Yeah, being, was that, tall, being that tall, <laughs> like, you know, there's people who are always like, ah, you know, it's not that bad being short. I put those on, and I was like, it is awful being short. Like, I, I, I put those on, and I was like, this is great. This is so good. If you really want to mess with your head, take those shoes to your house and wear them around there. And I'll you fall will down discover the and die. <laughs> well that, and you'll discover so many things that are dirty that you never knew were dirty. All oh, the all the paint spots that didn't get painted, mm -hmm. you'll notice. Yeah, yeah. There's there be dust. Now, Michael, before we get too far into this episode, yeah. I want to make sure that we don't forget you. There oh, are please. four sets of questions mm -hmm. for four guests. That's correct. Oh, so I would like to now uh, be the interviewer and interview please. you. Please, can, can I get a ding? Try and warm Thank my you. way out of these. All right, Michael, are you ready? <clears throat> yes. Well, the timer's already running. I Guys, didn't ask for that. <laughs> the thing is kind of associated ding. with the timer. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to go. Uh, all right, we're going to go again. Here we go. On your market set, ding. Michael, do you think most people would prefer to be like you? I hope not. Yes. Uh, are, you, are people who believe in the paranormal, i.e. ghosts, vampires, aliens, all crazy? Uh, some of them. You... Milk Toast answer. You are offered a choice of free training in martial arts or cooking. What do you take? Cooking. How many times do you usually hit the snooze button on your alarm clock? Twice. Do you feel uh, that a major reduction of the human population is necessary for the long-term survival of the Earth? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> wow. Right. We didn't get to the last question. Uh, Go for it. Hit, hit me with it. We uh, I'm going to ask you anyway. Want. Which of the following could you most easily live without for an entire month? Toothbrush and toothpaste, phone, internet, pornography. Oh, pornography. Hmm. Yes. That's I couldn't live That's without. I could. I could. I couldn't live without two of them, and you shouldn't live without toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. So Did, toothbrush and toothpaste. They yeah. really casually slipped in a little genocide question. Here's the thing. They well, yeah. they say that it could, be, it could get really hot or something. A bunch of people burn up. There's nothing you can do. Essentially, the the plot of Kingsman, right? Um. Hmm. Yeah. The the milk toast answer was like you can't throw ghosts and aliens in the same universe. I can't. Those are two totally different things. Mm. Yeah. I lean far well, more X towards one would, side. Would than argue the other. that they are. I'm just movie. saying, if it just said ghosts, I would have said wackadoo. Hmm. And we have a ghost show. We have. And well, that's it, but you are, if you I are said uh, aliens. I would you say are, uh, for uh, sure. one of the skeptics on the show. Yes. So at least that tracks with your yeah. online behavior. Yeah. And on camera. If, if you're watching this and our first member, season two. January thirtieth. Yeah, which I think is it's probably already that's now or then. Yeah. Yeah. It's either it's either oh, it's there happened. or then. Yeah, we're in February, I believe. Ah, oh, oh so yeah. Also, season one, all free now. All free Go on the website. Yeah. On the Check site. On yeah. the site. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a member. Plug you it, Doug. Be Doug. signed in. We we plugged it. We got it. Got it. Nailed it. Nailed it. I think this is a good time <laughs> to throw it to the former host, uh, Barbara Dunkelman, and she can tell you a little bit about uh, one of the sponsors of this. Fine episode today. Barbara? Thanks, Michael. This episode of Always Open is brought to you by Native. Did you know that many conventional deodorants contain aluminum, which forms a plug in your sweat glands to keep you from sweating? Yikes. Native's deodorant is made without aluminum, so you can feel better about what you're putting on your body. Less is more with Native. Native is formulated without aluminum, parabens, or talc. It's also vegan and never tested on animals. Native deodorant is made with ingredients you've heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter. You wear deodorant every day. Shouldn't you be able to understand the ingredients list? Uh, my favorite is still the cucumber and mint. It's 
amazing smelling. I use it every day. It works great. Um, I no longer get the clogged pores on my underarms or any of those weird red bumps. It's nice and smooth and it smells great and it lasts all day. Could not recommend enough. Uh, with over 10 scents, including their classic and rotating seasonal scents, you're guaranteed to find one you love. Their classic scents include coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, which is my personal favorite, and eucalyptus and mint. Free shipping on every order and Native offers 30 day free returns and exchanges in the USA. For 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code ALWAYS during checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com and the promo code ALWAYS. Thank you, Native Deodorant. Now back to the boys. We got all kinds of stuff in here, just like junk. Look at this trash. I don't know if we've come back yet. Hi, welcome back. Barbara did a great ad read, and Ryan just started rooting around and pulling it's, stuff look, out it's from all the table. Up? Yeah, it's a lot of this ripped up paper and all ripped that. Ripped up paper? It's like a, you know, this is what you so hear. Probably previous episodes, is that so I had to wager a guess. If you ignore the Achievement Hunter office, as I continue with this example, you always hear stories about you go into the guy's bathroom and it's fine, and then you go into the girl's bathroom and it's a nightmare world. Like, there's blood and feces everywhere. I mean, the that's how it was in college. Great I don't know. I just, a lot of feces in the women's bathroom. There was actually in an incident where there was it was quite smeared. I, I'm just I'm, I'm just saying. I, what happened? I also know of the men's rooms not great either. That men's room not, not great. great but I've top heard of the urinal and in general, for some reason, the women's room is worse. Now it could be men violating the sanctity of the women's room right. to make trouble. But you know what I don't get in the men's room? It drives me insane. And it's been true since high school. It was true in the army. It's true in most restaurant bathrooms. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. And unfortunately, it is certainly true at Rooster Teeth. Why do men, when they pee in front of a urinal, put boogers on the wall? I don't understand it. I don't know why. I it drives. I don't know why you put boogers crazy. anywhere. Why right? do you put them anywhere? But why? But certainly not this at eye spot. level where I have to stare. It doesn't make any sense. I'll be perfectly honest. Here's what you got to do. It makes no sense. At you all. can't beat them. So what you need to do is start joining them and make a picture out of them. <laughs> you just apply unpeaked. your own boogers. Connect the dots unpeaked. around. Yeah. Oh, connect the snots. Hey, there if it is. If you're gonna have to hey, look at it, you might as well make it aesthetically yeah, pleasing. That's uh, yeah. Make a little starry night of mm -hmm. gooey boogers. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. The thing is, like, especially in a bathroom, that's when you go for the pick, right? No yeah. one's looking. Plus, you can even if you're doing it at the urinal, you can wash your and hands. If you make after. Starry Night, you're putting a pick like, in Picasso. You smear you it on the right wall. Off like, I don't really understand. I don't know why you would do that. That wasn't Picasso. It's just as think. gross. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, like, it's it's even not just as gross. It's bizarre. But even if you were to pee on your hands at the urinal, theoretically, you'd wash your hands right after that. Absolutely. You, you wipe that booger on the wall. It's on the wall. That's it. It's not getting clean. And I don't believe that you would then go wash your hands if you're a booger wiper. You're not, you're a, not hand a hand washer. Here's what, nope. here's what really And if you're, you're, you're a, a booger flick. wiper, there's nothing worse, too, than... And either way. Because it, it you doing? creates a moral dilemma, right? You go to a urinal. You start to use the urinal for its intended purpose. You notice a, 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 a massed amount of boogers on the wall. Icky. The first thing I think of is I cannot flush this urinal now because I'm going to touch, touch booger it. hand touch. You're going to wash your hands. I don't want to... I don't want to... There's not enough soap in the world to help me with the there mental is. There is. reality that my hand touched other guys' booger hands. But then you're gonna be, you're gonna be juice guy, leaving the juice in the I urinal. I don't wanna leave the juice in the urinal. So what you can you know do what is what you go get a paper towel and then do it, but then it's like you've been or in the bathroom for half an hour. Yeah. Just kick it. Kick the top of the urinal sure. handle? Ugh, but then you're putting, man. Then then you're putting sticky floor things. urine on it. That's not any better. It's a lose-lose. It is yeah. a lose-lose. There's, there's no winning in a bathroom. All right, I have an alternative solution. You carry around a big jug of hand sanitizer, pour it over the handle, then flush. Or just carry a little hand sanitizer. No, it may just, take a lot. Just wash your hands. I assume that just that's what people. That's what I would. Do. I assume that's what people do already because there's always like a river or a lake in front of the urinal. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah, like people, to think that. I don't understand how that gets out. I, that's worse than the boogers, I think, because I, I feel like standing it's, in it, you're tracking that. Yeah. Yep. You don't track yeah. the boogers. Because mm -hmm. then you walk forbid into your, your house. shoes are untied. Oh, you that's have the to worst. those laces. You get a lace in a in the mm. pee water. That's it. You got to throw those shoes away. Here's just what, cut it off. Here's yeah. what troubles me. You already know, just as a fact, you've got you know you see the booger and you go, someone did that. Yeah. These, these sickos are out there. Not only did they okay. do it, they're they're flaunting it. Yeah. Yeah. They know. They know you're, you're going to see it. They it. want they to be it. seen. Right where, right where they know your right. eyes are going to be. Yes. But you already have people that you know 
without you being there, don't wash their hands when they use the bathroom. Oh, they don't yeah. flush, they don't wash, whatever. I've seen what them is, leave. What is troubling to me is that's a next step of like, when they're in the bathroom, they see someone else in the bathroom and they still don't. They don't even keep up appearance. They don't even put on a show. Yeah. That is troubling. Like Those people are Run sick. your hands under the water. And we, I'm at the I, urinal. If you turned it on and turned it off, I don't know what happened. Right. But it's just, you. it's a clear, like, they go, they leave, maybe like a, <clears throat> and then they're out the door. And I'm like, yeah, I, uh, I didn't wash his hands. You can I, hear it. I convinced myself, because in the bathroom in our building, there's a Please sink in the bathroom. Please don't but bless you. Thank you. And then a sink outside. Yep. And I convince myself when that person walks out the door that they're no just using the that. other thing. There's no reason for that. No way. You would, no one would do that. Nope. There's no way. But in my head, the world is a more sane place. You can tell yourself that, for sure. It's a good way to convince yourself that they're better. Mm-hmm. But, I'll lie to but me. But they're not. Hmm. Food for thought. Yep. They Wash your hands, Anyway. Mm-hmm. Just wash your hands. We've vamped a little All more. Right. So we can move on to the... Oh, there you go. This thing. What is that? The box. The box of issues. Box of issues. Oh. It's a different box. It's a play on words because that is a box of tissues. I don't know if this is even the one I picked. Nope, it's not. <laughs> Let's Go pretend fish. I pulled it out of there. Okay. It's now here. Got it. I just thought maybe they duplicate it. They didn't. Nope. Okay. All right. So uh, this. Can I can I point out something real fast before you get into Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I want to talk about an unsung hero in Rooster Teeth because she just walked by. Sarah Weems who does a lot of behind the scenes work at Rooster Teeth, is so committed to her job that she wore shoes today that match the always open set. Wow. That's so team co- spirit. Do you want to come show the shoes off to yeah, everybody? she's so committed. She always manages I to I know be that when she got up this morning, yeah. she thought, mm-hmm. how can I best serve Rooster Teeth? If, if the Ro- Achievement Hunter guys are going to be on always open, mm-hmm. I'll be damned if I'm not going to wear it. shoes to support that. Yeah, that, and they are. I think that was it. That's a I just solid match. I want you to know it didn't go unnoticed. Thank you, Sarah. Absolutely why, and not because I just bought Mm-hmm. There we go. She for this took purpose. your compliment and she just destroyed it. Threw it away. Yeah, she, she shredded it. Yeah. Threw it away like garbage. <laughs> like trash. Like a booger on the wall didn't in even, front of a urinal. Didn't even recycle it. No. She took a piece of paper, crumpled it up, and threw it away. No she amount of washing her hands rot. in the world. She also almost just fell over. Yep. Yeah, that happened. That, yeah. Yeah, now that she, happened now quite she's a bit. taking pictures that she's going to illegally post online. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I just, Sarah, please. You're not mic'd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's true. I'm sorry, audience. It's... She walks into this. Okay. All right. This is supposed to be nice. Everybody's nice. Everybody's nice. You're very nice. Just gonna... So nice. Gave her a compliment. Gave her a compliment, and she spat in your face. Spat in my face. Ugh. Oh. You know what? <laughs> hmm. I forgot. Up, there was there was little mini questions oh. for the the box of tissues that we could just kind of vamp a little more on. Oh, vamp. Oh, uh, can... This is a quick question. There's a question from William. What is the personal goal you have for 2020? Um. Uh, I plan to release a second album in 2020. We're working on that, so that's the goal. I get that. You play done. music. I do. Interesting. I do make music. Yeah. I will not contract the coronavirus. Nice. Okay. That's a goal. Ooh. Low bar. Lofty. Eager. Yeah. Eager. Well, it's Jack's making it harder. Yep. Mm-hmm. These can be personal or professional goals. Yes, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. Just, just uh, pick one. I would like to, among the many new shows that I have, uh, or that we and uh, Roosh Teeth have in the works that uh, t- to birth into the year 2020, I would like to find a vehicle for me, a Jeff show. Oh. Like, what would my show be? I think it was called uh, Achievement Hunter. Yeah, that, and, and I, and I, I you birthed, bore that baby. You birthed uh-huh. too much. And, oh, it's gone to college. And now it's and off. And now it's, it's yeah. off, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an adult. It it's, it's, it's off into the real world. Making its way. So you want to make something new? Uh, something smaller, but just more baby. intimate. But yeah, maybe a podcast of some kind. I don't know. And if anybody has any ideas, let me know. Favorite. I'd like a, I'd like a, a vehicle because I got to be honest. I, uh, as much as I, I love the responsibility of always being in meetings and looking at analytics and data and talking about all the exciting, not boring uh, elements to my job. Now uh, I do miss performing on occasion. And I still get to do it from time to time, but uh, the itch, uh, it needs more scratching. Mm. Yeah, so that'd be my goal. Michael? It's a good goal. I don't, I don't literally have one. I'm just trying to... You and Lindsay want to have another kid? No. No? Well, I can answer for myself. Mm. Not That's at good present. Point. You Not can share present. mine if you want. Mm. Not kids, I mean the goal. 
Oh, yeah, I didn't know where you were going with yeah, that. No, no. Definitely sounded like you were offering your kids. <laughs> I mean, if you want them, you can, you can uh, have them. But. No, just like, you know, keep doing dad stuff. That sounds know? good. Um, my, my little baby uh, turns two, or two, one, will be one this month in February. I was thinking February, February is a two. Where does the time go? She'll be one, and then and then Iris is going to be three, and then we got to start like looking at school for her. And, you know, yeah. she's like uh, she's playing Yoshi. She plays games. She you plays know? video games. Probably my twenty twenty is to her get a couple of more games under her belt. Yeah, seems like a good goal. Well, be careful. Once you get them started, it's real hard to get them to stop. She's it's too late. Yeah. We're already there. <laughs> it's, it's We're already done. there. She sometimes wakes up in the middle of the night crying, Yoshi. Really? Yeah, she was going, Yoshi, Yoshi. And it's like, because like she's awake and now she's like, well, now I want to play. And I'm like, no, it's three in the morning. You're going back to bed. You yeah. uh, you were probably 16 before you started doing that. It's amazing how much mm-hmm. faster our Waking kids. up and crying Yoshi. Yeah. 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 I was a fan. Was so a the, thing. the next stage of that is when you wake up at 2 a.m. and just find them playing video games. Right. See, it's strategic mm. uh, where when I put her to bed, I make sure that the Switch doesn't have more than 20% battery. Oh, smart. Good thinking. Because she doesn't understand how to like charge it yet. So I just go, oh, it's not working. She'll just walk up and go, not working, not working. And I'm like, oh, Yoshi needs to rest. It's time for, he needs a nap. Yeah, so he'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, be flying around all day. He'll be flying around, you know? Crazy. Some good, an- some good answers, especially Ryan's. It was really good. I, I don't try to strive for much. Yeah. Just live. Uh, and another quick question mm. from Dante. What's the most exciting part about being a father? Jeremy? <clears throat> the, the, the sex leading up to it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, ooh, that's, that is a good answer. But uh, hmm, exciting part about uh, probably when they master some new skill and you're like, my kid's not going to be the, the one in school that's holding everybody back. Ah, uh, you start looking for the weak link. Like, yeah. That kid. Not mine. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, you guys messed up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, again, I don't want to talk about Yoshi again, but he's pretty good. Yeah. I guess I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a little further along the parenting road than you guys. Uh, Millicent's a little older. She's 14 and a half now. Um, I would say watching... Seeing the moments where she's becoming the adult that she's going to be, like watching the, the, the interests that she has, the things that she avoids, and you can just kind of see the foundation and the building blocks of, of who she's actually going to turn out to be, which doesn't start probably until she's around, they're around 10 or 11, when you start to see that like that's going to stick, that's a thing that's gonna, that she'll be yeah. into or will inform her far, far into her life. So you're getting right there up to that <laughs> threshold of like escape velocity where uh, you're gonna have that moment where you can celebrate, like, all right, she's out of my hands and I didn't mess it up. Yeah. Millie turns 18. Uh, I'm moving to a cabin in the mountains and uh, retiring from the world. Yeah. Hmm. But until then, soon. Yeah. Uh, four years. That's soon. Feels like forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, and this is like, I guess, particular, because I have two daughters, um, I'm excited and this is happening more so now than, you know, ever has been, is with Luna getting older, like, them doing stuff together. Mm. Because I didn't really have that with my brothers, and Lindsay didn't really have that with her sister um, because there's such a big age gap. So they're less than two years apart. So I'm, like, excited once Luna's walking and can run around and play with her because, you know, Iris goes, we'll take her to the playground or a park or something, and, like, it's crazy... Um, the like lack of filter that a child has. You're just like, oh, well, who's that kid? I'm gonna play with that kid. Yeah. Like we we took her to a park not too long ago, and there was like this other. The, she was on some sort of bridge or something, some sort of playset, and she was walking along, and there was a girl behind her who was probably two years older than her, and she turned around and she had uh, some sort of like design on her shirt. It was like a sparkly unicorn or whatever, a bear, mm. and then it had like a little tassel. And I was just started touching it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like that. And I'm like, no, no, don't, don't touch random people. And the other <laughs> girl's like, yeah, go, no, go ahead, touch it. I don't care. And I'm just like, that's <laughs> wild. Like, you, that would be crazy if two adults did that. It's like a 30 year old just turned around and was like, what's that? Look at that thing. Yeah. And the guy's like, oh, thanks for noticing. I love things. Yeah. Yeah. I like you it too. Similar things. And I was just like, that's crazy. So she doesn't have that at home. Yeah, but she's getting there. Where Luna's getting bigger. Where like now, what she likes to do is uh, Luna's just starting to stand on her own. Just she's lazy. Yeah, she can walk. Where we all? But she's so good at crawling. I think she just doesn't try. Um, 
so, but she'll stand up a lot, just like with her hands on a table or something. And Iris likes to play with her, but she'll go up behind her, kind of bear hug her, and then just fall backwards with her. Like, <laughs> like, and and Luna's like, a, she's like a tough baby. She's big. Yeah. So she doesn't cry. She's just like, and just gravity is ripped out from under her. <laughs> and she just makes this like shocked expression. And she's just like, and then Iris will kind of like roll around on the ground with her. She'll do, she'll leg lock her. I was like, you gotta, you gotta let her go. And she had her like torso and her legs and she'll just be like heavy heavy i'm like yeah she's heavy she's heavy yeah stop choking your wrestler right there yeah she literally just like backwards slams her <laughs> it's it's great that they're so that they're so close in age because i think it's going to be fun for your entire life to watch those that relationship like my girlfriend and her sister uh they talk every single day of their lives they're like best friends and hopefully luna and iris will have that you know yeah I and mean, even like honestly even the scraps even the scraps will be even yeah. Right? There's no like, oh, you're five years older, you know, calm down. It might be like, well, get in there, you know, toughen up. Yeah. You know? Toughen up. There's always a chance too that Luna could end up being uh, like more physically dominant. Than, I, th I think than she's ours. going to be. Yeah. It's like, be like I a think, Nathan I think, David Zellner. Thing. I think genetically she knows that she's behind, but she's close enough. So she's like. Work harder to catch up. She's doing it, man. Yeah. She's only 10 pounds lighter than her. Does she do a lot of push ups? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, well, crawling yeah. is basically pushing it. It 100% right? is. Yeah, dude. She flaunts it. Handstands. Yeah. They like mm -hmm. they play this game now where we have an island in the kitchen, and, like, Luna is aware that, like, it's a game where, like, they'll both be there, and then Iris will point at her and scream, like, run away, and she'll grab me and start running around the island, and Luna will start, like, chasing us, and she'll, Iris will run fast enough where she turns around and gets behind her, and then she'll stop and, like, scream, and then Luna will turn around and just start screaming and, like, pointing. And this will go on for 10 minutes. I'll just run away. And then she'll like grab me and Lindsay and we have to run away and pretend not to see her. Uh, she just chases her around the island. So that's exciting. I like that. Yeah. I miss those games. They don't do that in their teens. Well, they might. No, they run away. It's, you got to call the police. Yeah, well, you don't mm. got two of them. That's true. They'll run away together. Fair enough. They'll have Watch each other's back. Take there care there of you go. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's great. I, was, I really thought I was set with the two of them thing. The... the Eli and Olivia, we're doing great, getting along. Things are starting to take a downwards turn, though. Uh -oh. It's, uh, oh, yeah. the third one to mix it up, or uh, they're uh, what? <laughs> you saying you were saying we thought you said you thought you were set with the two. I thought I was. Well, I thought I was set with uh, the two of them relating well to each oh. other. What's the age difference? Like four years? No, it's only, they're only about two years apart. Two years? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Olivia's six and Eli's eight. Uh, but yeah, no, they were great together for a long time, and now. There's a lot more arguing and just blatant emotional damage being done by Olivia. She oh. is a little manipulator. She's young. really oh yeah. It's just a, do what I'm saying, or I'm gonna tell Dad that you hit me. Oh damn! Like whoa! Oh, my sister did to me. Yeah, reminds me of somebody else. <laughs> I mean, is that the loophole? Is <laughs> Big that where... swig of a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully right. they like each other in a couple more years. You know what another good one is? Not to, you know, beat this point to death. Uh, now that uh, my daughter is 14 and she's in the dating world, it's actually quite fun to watch her date and to get excited about a young boy or a young girl or whoever and, like, see them be giddy and, like, like puppy love. It's really, I thought I would be scared of it. I thought I'd be one of those dads that's like, I've got the shotgun. But it's not like that at all. It's just you just genuinely are happy for them, and it's fun to watch them uh, experience those those flights of joy. You know, you've got something better than a shotgun. In the your internet? backyard, you've got a pizza. <laughs> you've gotten Achievement Hunters. <laughs> Have I showed you this? Well, you got Achievement Hunters too, but... Fine, hey. Pretty big, isn't it? In. Yeah, you got That thing gets real hot. You'd probably fit a whole boy in there. I wrote something in the back wall. Check it out. <laughs> oh, no. Damn. That's true. We're moving on from that. <laughs> uh, we've got we've got our question. Hmm. Okay. Now we're ready for it. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, I think Barbara has something else to say. Wow. Let's get back to Barbara and, you know, uh, hear from another one of our fine sponsors on this episode of Always Open. Barbara? This episode of Always Open is brought to you by Honey. You know that Honey is free. Online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart 
And you know how great it feels to save. Honey is so easy to use. It's a free browser extension that scans the internet for coupon codes. Then, like magic, it automatically applies the best one to your cart at checkout. Honey will find you every coupon code, sale, or discount on over 30,000 stores. That's a lot of stores. Uh, Meryl is always talking about how much she saves with Honey. She saved over $30 on a Christmas gift for her brother with Honey. Uh, Honey has found over 18 million members, uh, over $2 billion in savings. That's a lot of money. You could do the math on that one. Uh, did you know that Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, including Macy's, Target, Sephora, Best Buy, and more, and they're always adding more every single day. Users love Honey, and that's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on, Google, on the Google Chrome store. Uh, using Honey feels pretty great. Think of it as a little daily victory. Plus, it's free to use and installs in just a few seconds. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com open. That's joinhoney.com open. Thank you, Honey. That was pretty good. She did a good job. Mm -hmm. well She's done. a card. She nailed that one. Yeah. Well you know, like constant cut. professional. Yeah. Constant. Every, every time you start to allude to something, I keep thinking we're going to have a cut to and that's just the screaming nightmare terror that is off topic. Well, no. Yeah. Neither the ad read nor that off topic has happened yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it, it could. It will. But we can believe it has. Yeah. Yeah. question is, what will happen this year? What set will burn? Who will be weaponized? Um, how long until something is broken? Who would you estimate was the most out of control? Mario. Mario. There's no mm -hmm. question. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I believe if anyone gave any other answer, that person should be investigated. Mm -hmm. like, Mario gave that person money to say anyone but her. Well, that's yeah. her alibi. There's certainly no question at all. Now the question, the actual question is, will Mario tone it down or try to outdo herself? I bet she'll tone it down. Well, well, who knows? So? Maybe I'm wrong. No. I mean, I don't know. One way to find out. I would imagine. We clearly toned it down. If she wants to. Uh, Remember more than five minutes of the episode. I think she was. Maybe she'll go for ten this time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't. Who's to say? I don't know. You know. Uh, it just at the end of that episode of the of last year's off topic where they took over, Barbara looked like she just was in war. She was just like dazed, looking at the camera. She kept mouthing, "Help me, help yeah. me!" And it's like Trevor came over to like check on her in the middle of the episode. Now they know how hard your job is. It was wild. Now nah, they made it harder for sure. Yeah. One I don't thing's, care. At the end of the you day, don't really I wrangle whatever, us. I don't care. I just do nothing. Barbara was trying to wrangle. I just go, nothing can be done. Yeah. And when it's people over. Are, people are going nuts. I just sit it's there and go. from here you know, and they'll sort themselves. And then out. I Let talk the to broadcast consume. afterwards and I go, they're animals. And they're like, it's true. And then, you know, we move on. And then come back and do it again next week. That's it. Uh, so who can, can we help, Michael? Okay. Yes. So Who's, Whose life can we improve? Here's a question. Um... Hi, I'm 21 years old. This is the question, not me. Right. Okay. And a junior in college. My girlfriend of 14 months recently broke up with me. She never fully told me the reason why she wanted to break up. She did make me promise that after the semester break that we could be friends again. I still have tremendous amounts of feelings for her and struggled over the break because I never truly got any closure. I know we struggled a bit since our communication styles were different and we stopped being physical after our sophomore year ended. The last thing our mutual friend told me was that my ex does not want to have the what went wrong conversation. Our friend did say my ex still thought fondly of me and where's the ring I got her for her birthday. My questions are, is it worth it being friends again, even though I am still in love with her? And at this point, is closure worth it? From Chris S. That's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to my. unpack. My, my, my. There's well, several... two questions. Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> well, no, I mean, that's the, we got two oh, questions to address. Two questions. <laughs> All right. I thought uh, you were countering with two questions. Well, I figured we'd break it down Not here. that he could answer No, that, no, but. yes. It, the, we've, we've had the full text read to us. Uh, is it worth it being friends with an ex? No. I think it is. I think it's situational. You ending, right? dated one for I female your whole I understand I don't life. have a... I, I understand I don't have perspective on this. <laughs> I... I Ryan, you married your ex, though. Yeah. Let yeah. Let me preface my she no by saying, you and then came back. More than not once. now. <laughs> Take some time. Right. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You need to be a different person. You need to be a different. You need to be on solid footing in your life, mm -hmm. as does she. That Especially, is. Especially, I think it's it's more so like kind of a struggle because it wasn't it didn't sound mutual. No, right. it really wasn't. 
So, and if you still have feelings with this person, mm -hmm. for this person, strong feelings, I think they, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly, said they're still in love with that person. Yep. Uh, it's not fun to be friends with someone you're in love with, especially when you know it's unrequited. Like that's not, there's no path to success there. You're only gonna damage yourself. There and probably is. that relationship. I, as a living counterpoint, I will uh, say oh, there is <laughs> there is occasionally situations, but you're absolutely right in the way that you described it, which is the way that my situation panned out was there was lots of separation, there was other relationships between that. So every time you do that, you come back to it as a different person. So you can't go from dating someone into dating that, or you know, being friends with that person with the goal in your head of dating that person again without having some life experiences in there to change the both of you up a little bit. Right, for, yeah, either yeah. person in the situation. And he has to go in that with the willingness to move on. Like, yeah. you know, he, you can still be, my mentality is that you could still be friends as long as in your mind you can accept that it's over. It's also, though, I will say. And, but it doesn't <sighs> sound like he can. And also in that scenario, though, like it seems a little easy and like selfish for the the other person it in does. the relationship to say we're not dating anymore don't talk to me about that's it that's wrong i'm not going to explain it to you but promise me we're still going to be friends that's a that's a list of demands it's what that is. it's it's very unfair <clears throat> and it also puts that you, you got to be careful and by the way thank you for speaking uh your truth from your real life experience thank you i think that there's nothing more powerful uh than in speaking from the heart and you have an experience that none of us do. So I think that was exceptionally valid uh, uh, advice there. Uh, I, I will say, not to be harsh, but um, there's nothing less attractive than being overly needy to another person or than appearing desperate or, uh, I guess desperate's the word. And it'd be very difficult probably to have a, have a continue to have a friendship or relationship with that person and have that be equal footing that mm -hmm. friendship, right? Because if you still are in love with that person, it's gonna bleed through and it's gonna be really hard to to not look, uh, to get look like you're that guy or girl who's stuck in the friend zone, you know? And that's not a winning combination. You're not gonna, you're not gonna endear yourself to that person anymore. You're at best gonna end up, um, I don't know, probably becoming, uh, it's gonna become a very one-sided relationship very quickly, I would imagine. I, I can actually validate that part, even though my uh, example turned out uh, differently, but in the post-initial breakup phase where there was the, let's just be friends thing. Oh, I was a needy bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying not to use the B word, but uh, once again, speaking from your no, truth, I, I was I love speaking that. of yeah. myself, and yeah. I, I embraced that about myself yeah. at that phase of my life. I was. That's not a winning position to no. be. No. Yeah. The other. And you will be, you will allow that person to take advantage of you, and it will incent them to take advantage of you, whether they mean to or not. The other thing that it sounds difficult, just from the information we've been given, is that it sounds like these two, even not just being friends with each other, are part of the same circle of friends. Mm -hmm. Right. They're the mutual, mutual friends. friends. So, I mean, that makes it even harder. I mean, if you're part of the same friend group, you're not going to be like, I don't want to go out with my friends because this person is going to be there. You're going to kind of be friends with them indirectly if you're at like these same functions. And it's like, you don't want to be the person that's A, ignoring them, but you also want to be a person fawning over them. You Chances are too, if that person broke up with you first, and this is not 100% mm -hmm. uh, the way it's going to go, but chances are that person will probably move on faster than you. And if you mm -hmm. continue to try to be friends with them, you're going to have to deal with the the heart punch of watching them move on with a new person, probably within your friends group. Yep. And that's gonna make it that much harder. That's Good. why I think distance and space mm -hmm. is important. Who you will relentlessly be comparing yourself to. Yes. Um, yeah, no, it's, I think the other telling part of the story is that there was no reason given for the breakup. And she refuses means, to tell him. Yeah, that yeah. indicates either that person is not a good communicator or has something in particular about the other person that is egregiously wrong and she doesn't want to say it. Yeah, that's the other thing, the the question looking for closure. The closure is they don't want to be with you anymore. That's the closure. Yeah, you're gonna have to take that. I'm not saying it's fair, but that's what you kind of have to, prying at it that is not gonna help anyone yeah. really. You're just gonna, it's like picking at a scab. Yep. You know, you're gonna, it's, you're gonna probably make them, if, if you pursue it, probably A, damage any 
future friendship that you could have with that person probably end up making yourself feel worse and making them feel guilty for making you feel worse. And it's just... Well, I will say, they really... Not getting that feedback on why a relationship ended is very unkind on the part of the person that broke breaks it off. Just because, even if it's a truth that they don't necessarily want to hear, sometimes that can be very valuable for the growth of the person that is being broken up with. Uh, that was... That was my the feedback I got when I was trying to be friends with what is my now wife at the time was that you're just you're too I can't I need some space from yeah. you and I was she like was you like, know what you don't know anything about technology you don't know how to use a computer when was the last awkward. time you and then he, this guy someone. just <laughs> just completely he turned died. my life yeah. around yeah <laughs> but no that was it was I took a look at how I was behaving and I was like you know what that's it was the first girl I'd ever dated, so I mean, yeah, I was a little like, I don't know what's happening with this. Uh, but she was absolutely right, and I did learn from that. So that but denying she, them feedback like that can make it so that the other person can't learn. Uh, I, I agree with that, but if they're not willing to share that feedback, uh, you can't force it out of True. them. And it probably says more about who they are and where they are in their life than anything, and, and you probably that's... That's probably the answer that you need, mm -hmm. you know? That's not the yeah. kind of person that maybe you should be in a relationship or you want to pursue a relationship with if they're not even, if they won't even do you the, the honor of uh, telling you why. If they right. won't be open and I just think, right yeah. now, what's to say they would be late? It's also, but like, because of all that, like, I just find that, so how do you be, how are you remain good friends with that person? Yeah, yeah. You know it's I mean? tough. That's, yeah, that, not knowing that's is going to no always be in the back of your brain when you're with them. So it will no. be. Well, get them out of there. No, no to both. Yeah, I agree. So you gotta, you gotta move on. You know, maybe short term no, long term maybe, and no. <clears throat> Excuse me. Would you like some water? Coronavirus. Oh. Are oh. you really working against my 2020 goals? <laughs> I'm sorry. We should have changed the seating arrangement. Oof, this okay. is awkward. It's all right. I'll just I'll I build up an immunity. It. It'll be fine. Uh, let's take a last look in here. Um, We've done it. That's We've it. done it. Oh, wow. We've gone through the full menu. What is the, the, the time flies? Time it just goes. Hmm. You okay. wonder why you wonder why did they schedule this for two and a half hours? Can I borrow the box of issues, please? Oh sure. Oh, oh, oh you have an issue to take out of the box? Oh my. Oh, should we add one? You remember Jeremy. he's already got one at the top of the show. Here's well, one we'll pretend is my the, issue. That's all the time we have for today. <laughs> it says here, uh oh, this is a question for you, Jeremy. Oh. It says here, uh, I am uh, in your friend group. And uh, oh, no. it's taken me many, many years to get invited to your house for a game night. Mm -hmm. I finally was, not yeah. me, but the question. Yes. I finally was and had what I thought was a lovely time. Uh, certainly on my end, you seem to enjoy it as well. How many more years until I get invited to the next game night? Uh, and it was anonymous. So oh, I don't it was know. anonymous. You, so that's crazy. Crazy. Oh, you didn't even answer, unfold it. It's so anonymous. Answer to the audience, or just pretend that Jeff was the person. Right. I'll give. Like, yeah. I'll give the answer to the to the the, the person um, out there. So uh, the game nights I like to have at my house quite often. For right now, um, most of them have been with the same five people because we're playing a legacy game, which is it has to be the same people. Betrayal the legacy. The betrayal legacy, which is always. In my opinion, the worst part about having people over because we're usually held in by whatever game we're playing, and we're like, this is the number of people that are in that game. Um, but we are ending Legacy, and Kat and I are talking. Uh, we want to have like a big night where we have a bunch of people over with Coup and everything like that. And uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, just using examples and stuff like this, Kat has told me that. You know, whenever we name people, like, we got to try to get this person over here, we got to get this person over here. Um, she always, the, the first person she always suggests is Jeff because uh, she loves Jeff very much and always likes having him around. The, the person that asked the question isn't going to want to hear this. I, but I'm saying, I'm hypothetically. Somebody else. That's interesting that Jeff is the first one that comes up, yet Jeremy, I guess, shoots that down. At, at the, but it's not that I shoot it down, so we haven't had that big night yet. I understand. We haven't had that big night yet. Um... We have, you know, we've had the small betrayal nights, and then we've had. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to put be, this. Be I don't very want to careful here. Anybody. Choose your words wisely. Um, th there were some nights that uh, Cat feels like we we almost like owe to certain people. We're like th these people, like 
Like you try ben. to change the rotation. Like we too. have, we try to change rotation, but like we had Ben over to play a game, Ben Ernst, the other night because we've never had Ben over to play a game, and he comes over, he watches our cats all the time and everything. Cats are really good friends with with his girlfriend. She's like, we never have Ben over. She's good friends with Katie, but then every time she's like, we should have Jack and Katie. I'm like, no. Uh, so <laughs> let me, <laughs> you know j- I mean? Ben, if you're out there, I just want to say I hope you enjoyed it because uh, the second invite isn't coming anytime soon. I mean, it pro- probably isn't. But what I will invite you to, Ben, is wrestling because wow. I got Ben into wrestling now. Ah, lovely. So he likes wrestling now. Well, thanks but, for so clearing that the, up, Jeremy. The next game night to happen. You're not into wrestling. No, I said thanks for clearing that up. Oh, so uh, yeah, no. The, so the next big game night, I, I hope the person that that wrote this will will be around and be be able to join. Yeah, yeah, hope good they're still with us. Yeah. Okay. As I, I hope that got to the bottom of that issue. <laughs> We can only assume. Yeah, we can maybe, only hope. Maybe we'll have to check back. With, maybe if they're even watching, we'll check back with we'll Barbara. Yeah, and maybe they'll have written another. Right, uh, if possible. Even watch. People always write questions. Maybe they'll just uh, a tidbit. You know, just hey, yeah, it's, they're they're all I, still I heard here. That, apparently, now, it's like so many of them. Maybe that's uh, maybe somebody was about to do origami. It's just a lot. It's really a lot. Also, there's this really great note that's seven pages, but yeah. page six is nowhere to be found. That was where the cipher was. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So this is the end of the show, right? It's the, it sounds like it's the end of a lot of things mm. from what mm. just transpired. Um, but I feel like hopefully there was some closure there. You know, sometimes it's just not meant to be and you have to move on. I'm looking at you for no that particular reason. That was definitely reason. a closed door. For sure. um, yeah. Also never invited him to my house. Just, yeah. just to throw that out. There. Just to, yeah. Okay. You know. All right. <sighs> Thanks for watching. The always open, off-topic, extra life stretch goal takeover. Uh, if you don't know what any of those uh, particular string of words means, that was a charity we do every November, and uh, to help raise money, we said, "Hey, we'll switch casts." And you did it, so we've done it. Now the ball is in Barbara and Mariel's court. Uh, please enjoy their episode of Off Topic this week, Friday. And you get to watch their show live. That's exciting. I really hope there are survivors. At uh, 2.30 p.m. Central, be. if you're a first member, check it out. Um, because it almost certainly will be edited mm. yes. afterwards. Yes, highly. Because uh, who knows what's going to go down. Sorry to Peace. speak. One would People assume it's going to be a real home run. For sure. Mm. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, let's have fun. It's not seeing us next time. I hope you've gone. learned a little. I know we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are you doing this weekend? You want to come over? Convention. Well, you ruined that joke. Thanks so much for watching this season of Always Open. We hope you enjoyed having the Achievement Hunter guys on the show. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to be alerted of more videos on the Rooster Teeth channel. We love you. We'll see you next time.